Hey there, it's time for another episode of the InDesign Junkie, and today I'm going to talk about creating bulleted lists. Now, originally I had intended to make a video about both bulleted and numbered lists, but I decided that's just too much information for one video. So later this week I'm going to be releasing a separate tutorial that's going to focus exclusively on numbered lists, but for today we're going to talk about lists of the bulleted variety. And I'm going to start out by showing you how to create bulleted lists manually. This is the way that I always used to format bulleted lists in Quark. And needless to say, it's very time consuming, especially if you're having to format many lists in a document. But it's a good way, it's a good thing to show just for comparison's sake. And I also think that there's a lot of people that work in InDesign that still format lists this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these four paragraphs. And these are the paragraphs that we want to turn into bulleted list items. And I'm going to go up here to my control panel and I'm going to highlight my left indent field and let's apply a left indent of 1p3 which is 1 pica 3 points and that provide that uh, applies a left indent of that amount to those four paragraphs. Now next I'm going to come down to my first line indent field and in order to get that hanging indent effect where the bullet hangs out here we need to push this first line back so that's left aligned on our text column. And in order to do that, I'm going to essentially reverse the indent that we applied to everything by typing in minus 1p3 for just the first line. And there we go. And now I'm going to type in my bullet. And to do that, I'm going to press option and the number 8 on my keyboard and then press tab. And I'm going to do that for all of these. And there we go. Now you can apply a paragraph style to this, which would speed up this process quite a bit. But the problem is you would still have to go to the beginning of each item and manually type or paste in that pesky bullet. And compared to the way that I'm about to show you, which is InDesign's more robust way of formatting bulleted lists, you'll see that doing it this way really doesn't make any sense. The only time I see that this could make sense is if perhaps this is the only bulleted list uh, in your entire document and you just, you just want to format it quickly and not have to worry about applying, dealing with settings in a dialog box. Now I'm going to show you one more quick and dirty way of applying a bulleted list. I'm going to undo what we just did, keep these paragraphs highlighted, and I'm going to go up here to my control panel once again and see we have two buttons. We have the bulleted list button here and the numbered list button here. I'm simply going to push the bulleted list button and voila, we have an instant bulleted list. Now if you're happy with how this list looks, you're pretty much good to go. You can just press that button for all the bulleted list items in your document and you don't really have to worry about much else. But if you want to customize further how your list looks, for example, perhaps you don't like that bulleted character or maybe you don't like this indent. You think the indent should be bigger or smaller. You can't make those changes by simply pressing this button. In order to do that, you have to go to the bullets, bullets and numbering dialog box. And that's what I'm gonna show you now. And there's lots of different ways to get there, but the quickest way is to go back up to our button that I just showed. This time, hold down the option, Alt key, and press it. And we have our bullets and numbering dialog box. So let's start out with list type. We see two options here, bullets and numbers. Of course, we are going to choose bullets. I have my preview checkbox checked. And so now you see that we already have some action going on here. And that's because we have a bulleted character that's been chosen, but we have others that we can choose from here. So I can click on this and we have the asterisk. I can click on, say, this funky little heart character, or perhaps the check mark. And we, the cool thing is we can add more. If I press add, it brings up this glyphs palette, and we, we can choose from all the fonts on our, on our system. I'm going to make sure the font family is highlighted, and I'm going to simply press the Z key, which brings up Zap Dingbats. That's what I want. I'm going to press tab and sure enough there's all our zap dingbats and I can choose any of these so I could choose say this funky little star character and then I would press OK to add it to this field. I'm going to cancel out of that because we're going to come back to that a little bit later. I'm going to make sure that my bullet character is still highlighted. 
For text after, that is sim that simply indicates the the character that is applied immediately following the bullet. And this this code here is for the tab character, the tab key. And that I pretty much never change this because we need that tab in there in order to create that hanging indent. But if for whatever reason you do need to change that, you can press on this flyout menu and it gives you a bunch of other options um, to choose from. Now here's my favorite part, which is the character style. We can actually apply a character style to our bullet. So up here we can choose our bullet character and then we can actually further format how we want that character to look. And by pressing this drop down menu, it shows all my character styles that I've already created. I've already created this one called bullet. Um, and we're going to take a look at that a little bit later. Now in, in uh, CS4, at the bottom here, it, it actually allows you to create your new, your new character style directly from this dialog box, which is pretty cool. Otherwise, in CS3, you have to do it through your character style palette, which, as I said, I've already done. Um, we're going to obviously keep our in alignment left, and then I'm going to go ahead and apply my those same settings that I did when we manually formatted our list. So I'm going to go 1P3 minus 1P3 and I'm going to click OK. So I think that's looking pretty good. So what I'd like to do now is I want to create a paragraph style of this bullet. So I'm going to go to my paragraph style palette. I'm going to do a new paragraph style and let's just call this BL and see we can go down here and here's our bullets numbering settings. Oh, I've already used that use that style. Okay, let's go BL new. And just to show you our bullets and numbering, same exact dialog box as before. I'm going to press OK. And oh, I should have pressed uh, apply that style to the selection, but I'm going to go ahead and I'll apply BL new to all of these. Okay, so say that we have applied this formatting to all the lists in our documents and we've sent this off to the client and the client comes back and says, you know what, we want a really snazzy bullet. We think this bullet is a little boring. So we want you to go out, we want you to find the funkiest bullet that you can think of. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my bullets and numbering dialog box and let's find a funky bullet. I'm going to press add and I like this font. It's called DF Incidentals. And in here of all these all kinds of really funky characters we have this hot dog. I'm going to press the hot dog. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to make sure that the hot dog is highlighted here and I'm going to press OK. And I like that. I think that looks pretty fun. So I'm going to redefine my style make sure BL new is selected, which of course it is. And now we have hot dogs for all our bullets. So if we had formatted uh, bullets, bulleted lists for hundreds of lists in our document, we only have to change that style and all those bullets will change. So that's really cool. Now I want to go even further. I want to make that hot dog a, a color. And so this is what's great about our character style palette, our character styles. We can go now into our bullet and I'm going to edit that and let's make that bullet cyan. Let's make our let's make that hot dog cyan. I'm going to press OK and now we have cyan hot dogs. Isn't that pretty cool? So um, now in just with a few clicks of the button we were able to completely transform all the lists in our document without having to press a single click on a single character and if we had to manually format all those bullets we'd have to go in there and change each and every one in the entire document and that would have been a big pain. Now one last thing notice when I highlight my text here with our um, in our bulleted list the bullets themselves aren't selected and we can't at, when we format our lists in the way I just showed we can't actually select those bullets but we we have a workaround because say you want to perhaps copy this copy and paste this list into a new document what we can do is we can go up to type and we can go up to bulleted and numbered lists and we're going to convert those bullets to text and now those bullets are text okay 
So that really is everything about bulleted lists, and aren't you glad that I didn't next try to cover numbered lists in the same tutorial? Numbered lists pretty much follow the same same deal, but there are some significant differences, so I'll talk about those later next later this week, and until then, thanks for watching.